Let's bring in our political panel, Kerry Chikorovsky and Darren Barnett. Great to see you both. Kerry, big few days for the Prime Minister. He's touched down in Washington, a lot on his plate, and it comes at a, a time of a, a pretty precarious time, really, internationally. Yeah, a very difficult time to be in Washington, I would have thought, except that the Prime Minister will, of course, receive a very warm welcome from President Biden. I think they share a political philosophy and hopefully they share the same attitudes, for example, towards the support of Israel. We've heard the Prime Minister be very strong about supporting Israel, so I would assume that would be a very positive conversation with President Biden. Clearly, the ongoing drama in Ukraine will be a topic which they'll need to discuss, but there'll be other things uh, which might be a little bit more complicated for the Prime Minister. For example, I understand that the American security services are a little bit concerned about the the confirmation of the uh, port of Darwin staying in Chinese control. Uh, that report came out and said that was fine. Um, everything you read in the paper says that the Americans mightn't be too happy about that. And the other one, which I think might be interesting for him to have to deal with, is Julian Assange. Because as you're aware, Kieran, there's now quite a level of cross-party political support for resolving the Assange issue. So I would assume, because a lot of other mm. people are assuming, that that will be a matter which uh, Prime Minister will discuss with the President. Yeah, it's a good point. And there was a cross-party delegation just a couple of weeks ago, Darren, making that very point that Kerry uh, suggested there, including the former Deputy Prime Minister, Barnaby Joyce. And Mr Albanese himself has said on that issue, enough is enough. So let's see whether Joe Biden does, does budge on that. It will be interesting to watch. I don't think it's going to be the tier one priority. I think discussions about AUKUS, about the Middle East, Ukraine, China, I think they're going to dominate conversation. So, look, hopefully there will be some dialogue about Julian Assange, but it is a very complex visit. There's a big, delicate balancing act here for the Prime Minister. Obviously, we have had fruitful discussions with China when it comes to... Uh, the wine tariffs, other blockades or blocks that have been put in place by China since COVID, that as that begins to diminish, there are also other conflicts that require Australian attention. So it'll be a very complex visit, but obviously for the Prime Minister, it's a good opportunity to once again assert himself on the international stage. I think since coming to power that... Uh, Richard Miles, Penny Wong, Anthony Albanese have done a very, very good job and have formed some strong alliances internationally, and this is another opportunity for that to shine through. Darren Barnett, Andrew Hastie yesterday on Sky News said that the Albanese cabinet is divided when it comes to the issue of, of the Middle East, um, responding to Ed Husick's intervention where he said that Palestinians are being collectively punished. I put that to uh, Richard Miles earlier, Darren. Uh, Richard Miles, the acting Prime Minister, said this, this thing shouldn't be politicised, that both parties are backing Israel and its right to defend itself. They are. I think that the Labor Party, the government and most parliamentarians are supporting the right of Israel to defend itself. It doesn't mean you can't have some humanitarian concerns about the provision of aid, about uh, people who are trapped in Gaza, whether they be Australian citizens or otherwise. You can hold those concerns but still be very strongly of the view Israel has the right to defend itself and that will certainly be the view put by the Prime Minister in his discussions with Joe Biden. And those uh, pictures live from Capitol Hill in Washington on the screen now, Kerry. What's your read on that uh, that debate? Is there room for nuance like Labor has, uh, has suggested or do they need to be 100% on the same message? Well, they were 100% on the same message when this debate first started in the immediate aftermath of those horrific terror attacks. There was little or no dissension that you heard publicly from anyone within the Labor Party. Certainly, uh, as time has gone on, there's been a, a bit of a fissure, if you like. I mean, you've seen, for example, Labor Party politicians in New South Wales signing statements in support of the Palestinians. Um, 
Yep, there was one Liberal, I think, who signed it, and that was understandable in terms of her background. But I think that there is a, a bit of a battle going on within the Labor Party between probably the left and the more moderate right about what they do about Palestine. I agree with Darren. There is absolutely no discussion of anyone anywhere who doesn't deplore what's happening to the innocent people in Gaza. There is no one who disagrees with that. The problem has become where those, some of those statements start to be interpreted as support for the, uh, the terrible actions that Hamas has been doing over the last little while and certainly since yeah. the attack. I mean, if you, I don't know if you've read it today, Kieran, I'm sure you have, but the reports of some of the people who were at the morgues trying to, dis, to, to dif, identify the bodies, and I'm getting a little, getting a little bit overwrought because it actually caused me to tear up when I read it earlier, but, you know, the reports of those people of how they're trying to identify their bodies and the terrible things that happened, you read all those things and you wonder why anyone could possibly be making any anti-Semitic comments or comments in, su yeah. in support of Hamas because it is, it is horrific absolutely horrific. So the Labor Party will need to manage this. I think it's a position that they're going to have to manage internally, but I think that the overwhelming number of Australians will support Israel's right to defend itself at the same time acknowledging the damage that's been caused in Gaza to some innocents. Kerry, Darren, thanks. We'll talk to you soon.